You know, I waited to have this conversation until today because I wanted to see if John Harbaugh would address it in the press conference today, but I don't even think anybody asked him a question about it. And that is, of course, about the offensive line, specifically with the right side of the offensive line. In a press conference a couple days ago on Monday, uh, Cordell Woodland, shout out to Cordell Woodland. He was amazing when we had him on. We got to have him on again. Uh, but he asked John Harbaugh about the possibility of some other players getting into the rotation on the offensive line because he talked about how Pat McCarry has done it with Rosengarten and he asked John Harbaugh if there would be anybody else that could possibly do the same thing and it seemed like he was alluding to but without saying the exact name of Ben Cleveland with Daniel Filele and Harbaugh said well we'll see if the opportunity presents itself then we may go that route but then Jeff Zrebic shout out to Jeff Zrebic when we had him on he was amazing too we got to have him back on but when he asked he, he asked more straight up he's asked about Ben Cleveland directly and his question was Cleveland has held his own when he's played he's played solid he said what does Ben Cleveland have to do to become an option to earn more snaps and that has certainly been a question amongst a lot of Ravens fans a lot a whole lot of us because we've all heard the rumors about Ben Cleveland not being the best guy at practice, not being the best practicer for the Baltimore Ravens. But playing is different than practicing. We know there's some guys that when they practice, it might be like, ah. But when they play, it's like, oh, okay, let's go. And that's what Ben Cleveland seems to be. Not that he was this all pro pass protector for the Ravens, but he did his thing when he was out there. But Harbaugh's answer, it, it's not good. It, it, it kind of even worries me a lot for this Baltimore Ravens team because let's just read the answer Harb said if he Ben Cleveland had earned the job then he'd be the starting right guard if you look at the tape he didn't beat out Daniel Filele of course or anybody and right there I'm like oof we, we talking about tape we talking about tape Daniel Filele at right guard versus Ben Cleveland at right guard tape doesn't lie that, that's an old football saying that the tape don't lie, film don't lie. And when you look and watch it, how about making it sound like the tape is lying? But anyway, continuing, he said uh, he didn't beat out Daniel or anybody. I think Ben's a good player. I like Ben. I want Ben to take the next step. What year is he in? His third year? And then somebody corrected him and they said, no, he's in year four. And he said, oh, his fourth year. And, and I even thought with that, I, I know it's a lot of players on this football team. I get that. But. To me, it almost looked like that could have been like a little slight at Ben Cleveland. Possibly, maybe, but we're not even going to focus on that. Let's keep it moving. He said, Ben knows what he needs to do uh, if he wants playing time. He knows how he needs to play and knows how he needs to practice when he gets the chance. So um, our evaluation is that Daniel Falele outplayed Ben Cleveland. Facts. Straight up. So we got a little, little hood hardball right there real quick. And then he said, hold up, I'm cold switching. And then he said, matter of fact. I said, okay. But anyway, he said, if we thought Ben had outplayed Daniel, then he'd be the starting right guard. If I see that Ben's playing better than Daniel, then he'll be the starting right guard. Whatever it is, this is what scares me the most about this situation. Whatever Harbaugh's gripe is with Ben Cleveland, again, we don't know. We don't know what it is. Whatever his gripe is with Ben Cleveland, whatever the issue that he has with Ben Cleveland where he just, he ain't letting it go. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it started. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what's going on, but there's clearly still an issue with Harbaugh and Ben Cleveland, and it's been an issue for a while, but it's clear that that issue is preventing Harbaugh from doing something that he said he is going to always do, and that's put the best starting five out there on the offensive line. That's something that he said for years. That's something that he's gone by. He said, it doesn't matter. We're going to put the best starting five out there. We know Falele's new to the position, and we get that. We know it's a work in progress. Falele was a right tackle last year. Now he's moving to guard a position he never played. It's tough. We get that. But see, I feel like the Baltimore Ravens, they could afford to be a bit more patient if they were not in win-now mode. If they were, didn't just come from an AFC championship game back in January, then I could see, oh, if they were in rebuild mode, if they didn't have a franchise quarterback, then I could understand them being very patient with the offensive line. But you can't do that, my friend. 
because you have a Lamar Jackson back there. You have a Derrick Henry back there. You wanted to put all your eggs into the Rashad Bateman basket. If, in order to get the best out of him, quarterback needs protection. So Rashad Bateman, he needs protection so he can get down the field and get open. You got to put the best starting five out there. And then it's not only with the right guard position, but it's also with the right tackle position. Pat McCarry, six-man, cool, amazing. As a left tackle, he was solid too. Because I remember even Von Miller, he commended Pat McCarry. He said, ooh, that, that boy can play. That boy's nice. And to get that compliment from a Von Miller, an established pass rusher who's achieved the ultimate success, that's some high praise. And you know what's real coming from him. Because – he done went through plenty of left tackles in his career. Right tackle, he went, he done went through a whole offensive lines in his career, dominating them. So for somebody that's done that and accomplished everything that he's accomplished to give you praise, that says a lot to me. But Pat McCarry in 2024 at right tackle, it hasn't been pretty. And I know a lot of the right side as a whole hasn't been pretty, but for Roger Rosengarden, he just looked the part, man. He looks so much more the part at right tackle than Pat McCarry. And again, that's something else that scares me is that with it almost seems like Harbaugh's stubbornness. It, it, it's an Achilles heel to this team, and we've seen it for these first two games. Put Roger Rosengarten out there, man. Like, look, and, and I get, we always talk about it on here. Actions speak far louder than words ever could. So even though Harbaugh said what he said about Ben Cleveland versus Daniel Filele, even though he said what he said about Roger Rosengarden versus Patrick McCarry, it's like, all right, Harbaugh, show us. Show us something different. Let me see what he said sometimes. But you don't like competitive advantage. So maybe you would just not necessarily troll him, but maybe you just ain't wondering why they pick up on your scent. Like, okay, we really got a plan for the offensive line. But what's scary about that is that we actually seen the action too. It hasn't been just words that have been on display. It's been the action and, and the stubbornness. And – us having seen with our own eyes that Harbaugh is not playing the best starting five. The offense is struggling. It's very, very important, in my opinion, that in order to get the best Baltimore Ravens team you possibly can have, you got to play the best players, and you cannot let feelings get in the way. The team, keep it clean. We got to my favorite part of the videos where we get to hear from y'all. Before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to my guy, John E. And shout out to my guy, Kyle A. Appreciate the both of y'all for becoming Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you would like to, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. And if you don't want to and you still want your question featured, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. We got a lot to get through. Let's jump straight, in, straight into it with my guy, 101. He said, hey, Engraven. Been watching your videos for a long time. Hope you and the fam are doing great. I appreciate that 101. Thank you. Appreciate you keeping it 101 with us too. He said, uh, how do you feel about bringing up Dayton Wade from the practice squad to give the offense a little spark? I know it's been a horrible time for the offensive line, but I believe Nelly and Bateman are struggling and Wade and Keaton Mitchell could help out a lot. Oh man. Well, Keaton Mitchell, when he's right, then he's going to help out a whole lot. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but Dayton Wade, mm, that would be an interesting one. But I just don't feel like they would do that. I wouldn't mind if they did. But in order to bring him up, if he was going to get any like real playing time, he would have to skip over a lot of people that were in front of him. Uh, first, he would have to pass Tez Walker, who's been inactive. Um, but he would have to pass him. I don't think that would be very hard for him, too. But they would have to feel like Dayton Wade could contribute more than Tez Walker. Then he would have to pass. Um, he would have to pass Tylen Wallace. Uh, at receiver, and Ravens really like Tylen Wallace. He doesn't get much playing time, but Ravens, the receivers that get the most playing time, obviously, they Flowers, Dennis Rashad Bateman. They mix in a little bit of Nelly in there, too. Tylen Wallace is out there very, not very much at all. Um, so, But he would have to pass in order to get significant playing time. He would have to pass Tylen Wallace and Nelson Aguilar. But then when you think about the way that the Ravens offense goes, even if he passed those guys, uh, there's still there's Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, there's Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson. There's uh, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews. So all those guys will be getting their touch. Justice Hill, too. So, hey, he could come in and contribute, but I, I just don't see the Baltimore Ravens doing that right now. He said, also, I'm tired of people saying you can't win a football game by running the ball in the postseason. I believe you can. Lamar is a secret weapon. Let him run and use him to our advantage, but obviously do it in a smart way and don't get him hurt, plus the addition of King Henry. Um, 
Well, yeah, you can win a game, win a playoff game running the ball. I mean, remember when the Baltimore Ravens did it to the New England Patriots? I forgot what year that was, but when Ray Rice broke, first play of the game was like an 81, an 83 yard touchdown from Ray Rice. I think Joe Flacco maybe completed like I, I believe like five passes that game. It was something crazy. But so Ravens was just literally running all over the Patriots that game. I think it was in New England too, so that made it that much sweeter. But so you can win a game running the football, but Ravens fan, our, our thing has been the way that the Ravens have been doing this thing um, because they just completely take out the run game in the most crucial moments of the playoffs. So they make life harder for themselves. So we just tired of them doing that. He said, by the way, I do not believe we should trade Justin Tucker. He holds the record for a reason. People just too fast because of a few misses. Thank you for your time. Uh, now, I'm not saying they should trade Justin Tucker. But I don't think people being fast with it. Because if it was just a few misses, especially past 50, then, it, oh, okay, Justin Tucker, he just missed a few past 50. But if he made some recent 50 yarders, then it'd be like, okay, cool. But he's made one out of the last, what, eight 50 yarders? That's not good, my friend. We actually got another new Team Keep It Clean patron as well. Shout out to my guy, Harold. Appreciate y'all all being Team Keep It Clean patrons and showing that extra love and extra support to the channel. Our next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, being Raven? It's your boy Raven Pride. As you know, I now live in Texas, so I will be home for that Ravens-Cowboys game. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one. He said, I'm not going to say much. Can our, offense, uh, can our offensive line block a spam call? <laughs> I will do all I can for them to hear me shout, block, block, block for King Henry and Lamar. Love you, man. Keep up the wonderful work. Hey, we're going to be listening to you on the TV during that game. Should we have replaced Harbaugh with McDonald when we could have? Yes, but anyway, the next question came from my guy Ricky. He said, what's up, Raven? Hope you and the family are well. I've been watching back since that Ravens versus Chargers playoff game back in 2018. Ooh, we were at that game. That game was rough, but I appreciate you sticking around for so long. He said, I love the positive energy you bring and how informative you are. Thank you, Ricky. He said, let's jump into the question. Do you think we should have replaced John Harbaugh with Mike McDonald when we had the chance? I'll be blunt. I think last year should have been the last year for Mr. John. Uh, we have seen year after year, especially in the biggest games, whenever his game plan gets punched in the face, he always fails to adjust. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Real quick, where did that come from? What did they say that came from Einstein? I don't think that's the definition of insanity. I think the definition of insanity is just being extra crazy. It's like an extra level of crazy. But anyway, continue. He said, uh, by that definition, I will say Mr. John is insane. You see how you call him the Mr. John? Ricky being a little petty. He said, Mike, on the other hand, had two years in the league. He led a historic defense, which earned the triple crown. We've seen on the defensive side of the ball last year what Mike would actually adjust his game plan and how the game is going. That's true. That's such a great point. Uh, I know he's an unproven head coach. I mean, he is an unproven head coach, but he's sitting at 2-0 right now. Harbaugh's sitting at 0-2. <laughs> Let's talk about it. anyway. And would you consider would you consider the Seattle Seahawks to be a more talented team than the Baltimore Ravens? I think a lot of people will say no. Hey, there might be some people that say yes, but I think a lot of people say no, but look where they at. Anyway, continuing. He said, um, I know he's an unproven head coach, but I feel like the potential is 10 times of what Harbaugh's ever was I know we will never know what life would have been like with Mike at the helm, but it's fun to fantasize about having a young and, com and competent defensive mind leading this team. Sorry about the long question. Keep up the good work, bro. And like I think Harbaugh should have been last year, I'm out. Next question came from my guy Robert. He said, "What's up, Raven? Hope everything is well with you and the family. Everything is great. I appreciate it, Rob." He said, "Looking at how the Ravens uh, have habitually mishandled the offense, if they don't evolve in the front office and offensively, do you think Lamar will sign a second contract to stay with the team? Because, like I said, or like he said." He's not getting any younger. Ooh, ooh, you thinking way down the road. I like it, though. Um, I think everything just depends on the state of the Baltimore Ravens uh, whenever that time comes. Um, you know, Lamar, he, he wants to score like a million points. He want to throw for 6,000 yards. Um, so I think it just depends on the philosophy, depends on where this team is headed, depends on how things are. With him. I think so. it just depends on so much uh, down the road that, we can't even like really dive into because we just don't know yet. Next question came from my guy Sebastian. He said, man, I'm just laughing. Harbaugh never fails to amaze me and that's not even a compliment. Who's got it better than us? He said, yeah, your brother and your former defensive coordinator. So he's talking about Jim Harbaugh and Mike McDonald. Ooh, shots fired. Are the Ravens serious about winning? Next question came from my guy Sean. He said, hey, Engraven, it's been a minute since I sent in a question. Yeah, 
It's been like over a year, huh? It seemed like it. But anyway, he said, uh, I want to say congratulations on the birth of your daughter, and I hope that you and the family are doing well. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, this game against the Raiders was genuinely horrible to watch. It was another one of those games the Ravens should have won but didn't. We really let Gardner Minshew go 2-0 and against us in the last two years. How do we always have that one thing work for one week and then completely go against it the next? Likely barely did anything in this game, but the previous week he had over 100 yards receiving and a touchdown. Almost two. He said the Ravens should not be losing a 10-point lead to the Raiders. Uh, we all agree with you 10,000% there. He said, it might be a crazy question to ask, but are the Ravens really serious about winning? In my opinion, Harbaugh should have been gone after last season. I feel like any other head coach who would have had Lamar as a quarterback and fail as much as Harbaugh has in big moments would be gone. Oof, my goodness. That's, uh, that's deep right there. It, it just reminds me of... Um, John Fox. I don't know if y'all remember John Fox. John Fox was a head coach of the Broncos. Um, and he took the Broncos, I think, all the way to the Super Bowl, I believe. And they got beat up. He got fired. Like, the, the, the head coach who took the team all the way to the – got fired. They brought in uh, who, Kubiak. Who they brought in as a head coach? Was it Kubiak? I think it was. Well, anyway, whoever it was, they brought in a new head coach, and they won a Super Bowl. So – that's like, and teams are doing that. Like, look at the Eagles. The Eagles had won a Super Bowl with um, uh, the coach who he coached the Jaguars. I forget his name. I can't remember it right now. But they won a Super Bowl with him. A couple years later, they fired him. A couple years later. And then they went back to where? The Super Bowl. They did it. So you look at Andy Reid. Andy Reid with the Eagles. Now, he did not win a Super Bowl. But Andy Reid was NFC Championship, NFC Championship, NFC Championship, NFC Championship. All them NFC Championships. Then he even made it to the Super Bowl. But then, after a while, took a little while, but then they end up parting ways. He goes to the Chiefs, boom, he went in Super Bowls. So, a lot of time, my, my point to say all that is from both sides, from the organization side and from the coaches side with Andy Reid, sometimes you just need to change your scenery. It can be good for both parties. It can work out for both parties. So, that's that. But anyway... He said, uh, we needed to improve our offensive line, but instead we let go of a player in Zyla, for example, who was pretty good last year. I feel like we needed to improve more offensively for this season other than just getting Henry. The Ravens have a uh, once-in-a-generation quarterback and don't seem to be capitalizing on it. Uh, where would we be if we had a coach like Andy Reid? Oh, they got three Super Bowls. Maybe we would have had four. Who knows? Anyway, uh, where would we be if we had a coach like Andy Reid or Shanahan? I hope I made sense with this question. Just like Harbaugh should be after this season. I'm out. Oof, yikes. Enough is enough. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He says, what's up, Engraver? It's been a while since I sent in a question. It certainly has, my friend. Well, welcome back. He said, after this loss to the Raiders, man, I think we have to start thinking about moving on from our head coach. Two challenges and lost both. The, my, my issue wouldn't even be that he lost both challenges. My issue is the actual challenges, that they were just terrible challenges. But anyway, continuing. He said, I'm never comfortable when we have a lead. We have Lamar and Derrick Henry and, I don't, and don't run any play actions or read options. Well, they do, but very seldomly. That is an issue because they make stuff more predictable when they don't. Anyway, continuing. He said, I feel like he doesn't know how to use our players. He makes dumb and just random excuses for his failures. It's only two games in, and I know I shouldn't feel like this, but we are doomed. Uh, with this schedule coming up, we could go 0-5 if we don't fix stuff and fix it fast. Yes, we had some calls that were bull corn. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, in both games, but you can't leave it in the ref's hands. Clock management and coaching decisions are terrible. Lamar and some of these guys bailed him out way too many times. So my question is, after this long rant, who is replacing Mr. John? Wow, a couple of y'all calling him Mr. John. Okay. See, the pettiness is running through uh, Raven's flock. Um, who would replace John Hart? That's such a great question because we just wouldn't know. Would the Ravens like somebody who does not have experience as a head coach? Would they run that risk? Or would they be like, you know what? We want somebody who uh, has been around the league a while, somebody that has a pedigree, so to speak, somebody who has a lot of experience head coaching. I just wonder, because John Harbaugh didn't have any experience, and they went with him. He was not the first choice. He was the second choice because they really wanted Jason Garrett. They wanted him, but obviously they didn't get him, so then they turned John Harbaugh. Um, so what, what kind of direction would the Ravens go in? That would be the question. Holding us back. Next question came from my guy Ricky Williams. He said, I believe we need a shakeup at head coach. John Harbaugh has made it every bit obvious he is what's been holding the Ravens back for all of Lamar's tenure. The lack of preparation in the playoffs and in situational football, the blown leads because of lack of adjustments. The poor clock management is becoming inevitable and a direct result of having an overrated coach. Ravens win due to talent and having good coordinators, not because of a good head coaching or schematics. I know it's early in the season, but do you agree? Mm. So do, do I agree that we need a shakeup at head coach? I, I wouldn't mind if they did that. I, and like I've told y'all, there have been years, previous years, where I felt that for sure, uh, both before and after uh, the Lamar era. 
Um, so, and again, I know people always say, oh, well, if, if Harbaugh got fired, he'd get hired in like 10 seconds. I know he would. And that would be great for John Harbaugh. Just because Harbaugh would be hired quickly like that does not mean that he would not be replaceable. Does not mean that whoever Ravens brought it, like, I feel like for, for Ravens, like, think about the, how good of a team they got in a lot of different places how good of a roster they got in a lot of different places for somebody to come in to the baltimore ravens the head coach to come into the baltimore ravens i feel like it would be very hard for them to fail it would be very hard for them to fail with the team that the baltimore ravens have it, it really would be like you you got a cheat code at the quarterback position you got a glitch at running back you even got a glitchy fullback he be catching passes sometimes too you got like like if and I feel like you ain't even got to do nothing crazy. It would be so hard to fail. In order to fail, you would really have to, like, go out of your way to be a bad head coach for the Baltimore Ravens right now. Coaching. Next question came from my guy, Josiah. He said, well, what's good and great? And I hope things are good with you and the fam. Things are great. I appreciate you. Uh, this is not going to be too long, but I just had to ask if you've seen all the stats and posts from Ravens Twitter after the loss. Oh, you know, I've seen it all, baby. Uh, he said, like, the fact that Harbaugh has blown the most double-digit leads in the fourth quarter uh, leads any coach since at least 1991 after we lost our ninth blown lead today or seeing how lost Filele was on the final sack that effectively cost us the game or seeing how well Mike McDonald is doing knowing we could have easily had him to be our head coach. I'm actually losing my mind engraving uh, because all I can think about is Lamar's potential will never be reached with the coaching he has how do you feel after seeing the majority of Ravens Twitter call for Harbaugh's job mm. I actually gonna take it to the question that you or the comment that you said before uh, all I can think about is Lamar's potential will never be reached with the coaching he has I think that part goes beyond coaching I think that part goes to the front office too uh, with the general manager, and look, we love Eric DaCosta, but we just wish he would just move differently to get the most out of Lamar, and they don't do that right now. They haven't done that um, overall with Lamar Jackson's tenor. I wish they would just really be a lot more aggressive when it comes to getting talent around him, especially at the receiver, that just at, at the receiver position. Obviously, offensive line too, but certainly at the receiver position as well. Because, anyway, that's an old conversation. But, anyway, um, how do I feel after seeing the majority of Ravens Twitter call for Harbaugh's job? Like, it, it's, it's something that a lot of people have been saying for a long time. So, it really wasn't anything new. Uh, but when you win, a lot gets covered up. But when you lose, everything's exposed. Next question came from my guy, Alex. He said, Hey, Raven, hope all is well with you. Everything is great, Alex. He said, I just noticed that after Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley unfollowed each other on Instagram, after Marlon posted a picture of Ronnie's canceled wedding, do you think that has created a lot of tension and negative energy around the team? I, I, I think they're probably just joking. Maybe they're just friends that's like extra comfortable with each other uh, to be joking like that. So I, it could be one of those things. Or oh, if it's serious, hey, it could be. Who knows? It's just one of those things that we won't know unless the right Raven speaks out. But I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. It could be one of those after the season type of things. Maybe Marlon might drop it on a podcast or something. He said, appreciate and always enjoy your content. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, you're amazing and have a great day. No, Alex, I appreciate you and you have an even better one. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, now that Zay has verbally expressed his frustration with the way this team is operating, do you think he will be on the hot seat to be traded? <laughs> no. If they traded Zay Flowers, I think that Lamar would be heated. I think he would be very upset about that. I think he would not like that at all. I don't even think he liked when they traded Hollywood, but Hollywood had been asking to be traded for years. Um, if they traded Zay Flowers, uh, I think that would be a very foolish decision. If they asked for a trade, then it's like, oh, but if they just traded him, I think that would be very foolish because Zay is the most productive wide receiver um, the Baltimore Ravens have. Uh, Zay Flowers right now, he, he is on pace to be the best uh receiver that the Baltimore Ravens ever drafted the most complete receiver that the Ravens ever drafted so oof. oh anyway continuing he said all I can think about is the situation with Hollywood Brown and the frustration he had with this team and not being used will the Ravens choose a coach over a player again I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you said again I'm so glad you said that because when I was reading it uh it, 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 it I did see will they choose a coach over a player but then it moved to the next line. So I was hoping you would say again, and you said again, because they have done that before. He said, uh, when the problem is apparent and has been a continual issue, this team is stacked with talent. Without leadership from the head coach, building chemistry is impossible. The offensive line is young and inexperienced. Ravens knew going into this season, protection was going to be an issue. They should have prepared this line with more veterans so the younger guys could learn under them. Yeah, this is very unraven-like to go so young on the offensive line, especially in win-now mode. Like Again, like we talked about earlier, they had a new 
quarterback. If, if everything was new, new coach, new quarterback, new this, new that, and they went with a young offensive line, oh, but the win now, Mo Ravens, they don't really do stuff like this. But anyway, he said, uh, it's early in the season. EDC has a bit of money and picks to build a wall on this offensive line. As for Harbaugh, we all know how he operates. It does seem to be getting more suspect, keeping him as the leader of this team. Game management and personnel situ substitution uh, has always been his weak area. Ravens really need to consider making a change. Harbaugh's integrity in the locker room as the leader is slipping, and it can be seen in the w by the players. Great leadership starts at the top and becomes infectious with the players. Ravens should not waste any more time. This organization deserves more than the present mindset they have been settling for for years. Wow. Time for a change. Next question came from my guy, Terry. He said, what's up, Greg? Hope you're doing well and the family is doing great. Just wanted to share my thoughts and see what you think, if that's cool with you. Oh, it's cool with me. Let's get it, my friend. He said, oh, there needs to be a change of action uh, and scenery with the front office. Time and time again, we are preaching the Ravens need to change their ways, and this is something that us fans, including you, have been emphasizing before Lamar came. It's funny. We were just talking about that with the Ravens just not doing enough to get the best out of Lamar. Uh, and this has been for years. They could have done so much more for the offense as a whole. But anyway, he said, Hobbs, number two, Hobbs has to go. The clock management, no adjustments until late in the game and challenges is just putting us back. You can't say you're going to put your best players on the offensive line and then they perform like this and now it backfires on what you said. Granted, it's Max Crosby, but come on. The rotation with the offensive line is showing, is, excuse me, is throwing off the consistency of not only the offense, but the defense as well. Spot on. No arguments there. He said, number three, it is going to take a leader, whether it be Lamar or Roquan, somebody has to speak up. We've seen Lamar going off on that offensive line on the side, especially that week one game. <laughs> well, Roquan, ooh, Roquan, Roquan, I don't know what's been going on in these past couple of weeks, but it's like Roquan, I mean, he be leading the team huddles and stuff, but it's been rough watching him, man. I don't know what's been going on, man, but it's like if, if, if he was to speak up, he could. Well, are they going to be listening the same? Because Roquan ain't been looking so good out there recently. But anyway, uh, he said 0-2 in the first time, uh, excuse me, 0-2 in the first two games of the season isn't acceptable for a team that was just in the AFC Championship game. What are you thinking, Graven? You think there needs to be a change of scenery within the front office? Does Harbaugh have to go and does Lamar or Roe have to speak up and say something? Appreciate you for everything. And just like Harbaugh doesn't have with Tucker, big trust. <laughs> All right, so does somebody need to speak up? There needs to be a does there need to be a change of scenery? Does Hobbs have to go? Um, there just need to be changes on how the Baltimore Ravens operate. Uh, they, these have been conversations that have been had for years. These have been issues that we've been talking about for years, where the Baltimore Ravens have to get better. And it's like it's it's small stuff here and there in front office and the game plan and coaching and play. It's like small stuff here. And it's not like they got to do these huge sweeping change. Well, unless like. With Harbaugh specifically, because I know that's a big topic of conversation, obviously. Um, he would have to change a lot of who he is. So that would be a huge change. But Harbaugh's been the head coach for since 2008. If he can't been doing the same stuff for this long, what, what should we really expect to change? That's why I can say for a change of scenery for him, okay, cool. I, I wouldn't be mad at that. And it wouldn't be like a bad, it ain't uh, no bad blood. They ain't no, I ain't on no, I hate John Harbaugh. That, no, I ain't on that. But like we said earlier, a change of scenery, it can work out for both sides. It really can. So I think a change of scenery could be really good and beneficial for both the Baltimore Ravens and John Hubble. Next question came from my guy Michael. He said, hey, good morning or afternoon to you and his family and the team. Keep it clean. Remember, some, sometime back, I said Bill Belichick as our new head coach. You didn't think it would happen or you didn't see it happening after watching your video on the Raiders debacle. How does that feel now? You and the family and the team, keep it clean. Y'all have a wonderful day. And just like Harbaugh might be at the bye week. <laughs> Oh, no, he says, excuse me, just like Harbaugh might be by week five, I'm out. Wow, y'all getting creative with these I'm outs. I appreciate these a lot, man. Um, Bill Belichick, though, I've been seeing a lot of people say that. I just, I don't know. Like, would Bill Belichick really be able to get the most out of the Baltimore Ravens offense? That's what I would be concerned about. Would he be able to get the most out of their offense? Defense, I wouldn't be worried about that. But, like, Bill Belichick, like, mm, I don't know. Like, I I, I and I get this the the six I I get the Super Bowls all that I, I get I just Bill Belichick I just I don't know man I don't really see it I know again Lamar Jackson is different from Tom Brady he's also different from um what's the dude name number ten uh who was doing the gritty and all that the quarterback who did they drafted oh my goodness I cannot remember his name right now then he got traded to the Jaguars now he's backing up T Law. Whoever that quarterback was that the Patriots drafted in the first round a couple years back, 
Um, Lamar's obviously much different from him. Um, I don't know. Bill Belichick just does, he, he don't move me like that. So I, I'm, I'm still would not really be on board uh, for Bill Belichick as Ravens head coach, at least not right now. Um, I, I think Bill Belichick, I feel like it's just a, um, for a lot of Ravens fans, it's not necessarily a knee-jerk reaction as a head coach, uh, but I, I feel like it might be knee-jerky to just wanting Harbaugh out of here so bad. You're like, all right, you know, bring in Bill Belichick. Let him replace Harbaugh. So I, I don't know. I just don't see it right now. Maybe if you could explain to me what, what the vision, anybody who would like Bill Belichick as a head coach, please explain the vision to me, what you see, what you feel like he would bring to the table for the Baltimore Ravens. Because right now I'm just not really seeing it like that. But maybe you could share something with me that I, I'm just not seeing correctly. We should have listened. Next question came from my guy Julius. He said, Hey, Raven, I was looking up John's resume and I came across these clues we have missed as diehard Ravens fans, uh, especially the undercover lie about Cam Cameron. Remember, we fired Cam because we wanted more of an air attack, right? I copied this from an NFL article when Cam was fired. It read, Sunday's loss to the Redskins was typical of Cam Cameron's run as offensive coordinator. There were flashes of brilliance with three touchdowns on the team's first four possessions, but then the offense bogged down. Nine of their 13 drives lasted four plays or less. The lack of use of running back Ray Rice was a, consistent concern, was a constant concern, and there were re reports of frustration with the team's no-huddle approach during the season. Mm. You know what? If you take out the names, then... That 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 sounds like some Raven stuff now. Like I mean, we we ain't scoring no <laughs> we ain't scoring no three touchdowns on the first three possessions. Uh, but that's that that could be applied to like recent stuff. Anyway, um, he said, why does this sound like the same offense we saw last Sunday? Over 10 years ago, you can't make this up. He said, look at the history. In 2011, 2012, fire Cam Cameron promoted QB coach Jim Caldwell. 2013, Caldwell leaves to be a head coach. 2014, Kubiak leaves to be a head coach. 2015, uh, fire Mark Tressman promoted QB coach Marty Morningweg. 2017 and 18, fire Marty brought in Roman. 2019 to 2022, fire Roman brought in Munkin in 2023. Look it up for yourself. Every OC that was fired suffered the same fizzled out offense flu. Ray Lewis should be the head coach oh no he actually ray lewis was the head coach well i mean i know what you're saying but he was the head coach it was hardball but you know they were looking to rafe as a leader but that's why hardball <laughs> you know how we was all remember that well for those of y'all that was around back then if you weren't that's fine too remember when ray lewis said oh this this is gonna be my last ride i remember watching i was crying i was crying like oh man ray lewis getting ready to retire I was all sad. A lot of us were all sad. We were all upset. Like, man, not like angry at him, but like, man, this is it for Ray Lewis. Like, this is going to be, this is it. This is the last games that he's going to play. You know, Harbaugh was in the background. He probably had a little hat over, over his face. He probably laughing. He probably like, yes, I get my team now. These going to be my boys now, not Ray's. But anyway, but and then when Ed Reed, he got pretty much kicked off the team too. They ain't got rid of Ed Quan Bolden. Oh boy, they, <laughs> I know Hobo was happy back then. Um, but anyway, man, yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's been a lot of the same patterns and stuff. But again, like we said, Hobo been a head coach since 2008. So he got some stuff that he does great. Then he got some stuff that he could work on too. One very lucky man. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, "Hey, great. Hope everything has been great. It's been a while since I wrote in, but I just want to say congratulations on your growing success. I hey, appreciate that, Dylan." Uh, he said, "Let's get down to business. I'm going to start by saying everyone has their opinion, and there may be people that agree with what I say, and there might be a lot of people who think that what I'm about to say is all rubbish, and that's fair. Exactly. And I respect you for saying that because that that's life. They, there's plenty of stuff that I say. People be like, what the dude talking about? He doesn't know anything." And that's cool. It's life. Not everybody's going to agree, and that's okay. He said, um, Harbaugh is one lucky man. But in saying that, what success we've had has almost been in spite of him. 52, 5, and 8 are all numbers he should forever be grateful for. If it wasn't for Ray's last ride and, oh, my goodness, look at that timing. We were just talking about that. He said, if it wasn't for Ray's last ride and Joe Flacco having the postseason of his life, we wouldn't have that Super Bowl. If Lamar didn't do his thing his rookie year, Harbaugh would have been gone. 
Uh, we seem. Well, I would. I would throw twenty in there too. I throw twenty in there. I throw eighty-one for uh, Anquan Bolden. But anyway, continuing. He said, "We seem as a club always to be one or two years behind our goal. We all knew we needed a new offensive coordinator after a couple of years with Greg Roman. Uh, we didn't pull the trigger for another couple of years. We made our lives harder by not developing the pass game sooner. We made our team a laughing stock by holding out with Lamar, who had at the time won MVP already. We play the uh, we play the opposition in ourselves by making silly mistakes and not being able to control the clock well." Whether it's wasted challenges or silly timeouts, and it's cost us plenty of games we should have won. But then we get a lifeline. Mike McDonald, who looked like the only candidate to take over for Harbaugh, he left us to go to college and then came back and had two excellent seasons with last year being perfect with the Triple Crown. But we made and hosted the AFC Championship game. We had another shortcoming when we lost, where we lost to a better coach. To me, that was the last straw. And I know the players didn't play the greatest, but it falls on the head coach. We had the easiest candidate to take over our team and change our direction, especially since we are historically a defensive-minded team, and yet we watch him leave and walk out the door while we've dropped to 0-2 in a game that we should have lost. We should not have lost with poor clock management. That's just my two cents. My goodness, the way that he broke it down was amazing was amazing um so shout out to you dylan for breaking it down that way um wow harbaugh uh yeah you certainly give a big shout out to flacco and yeah, remember flacco well harbaugh again these things obviously worked out harbaugh was not the baltimore ravens first choice it was jason garrett flacco was not the baltimore ravens first choice it was matt ryan but they couldn't trade up. So, hey, it obviously worked out. Matt Ryan been to a Super Bowl. So cool, cool, cool. But he ain't winning. Flacco got the job done. Um, wow, and, and and I don't I don't want to make it like Harbaugh didn't do didn't have anything to do with Baltimore Ravens success at all. We can't do that. Uh, we know that again, Ray Lewis and A. Reed, they were definitely some very strong, strong leaders. Uh, on the Baltimore Ravens team back in 2008, because that's when Harbaugh got there, to 2000, the 2012 season, uh, which was both of their last years with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but, yeah, Harbaugh definitely is thanking them a lot. It, it just worked out. The timing of everything worked out. Um, and Ravens, they've come close, but not close enough to get in that same success since. Um, and a lot of Ravens fans wonder if we'll ever – get that same success again under the current leadership of the Baltimore Ravens, under the current front office of the Baltimore Ravens, under the current head coach of the Baltimore Ravens. So um, this season, again, it, and it's crazy because we had this conversation last year. I think we had it the year before that too, um, that if they didn't get the job done, then they should go in another direction. Um, but certainly starting off at 0-2, it's having a lot of Ravens fans really feeling like that. 